Hey everyone, welcome back. I am so excited to be speaking with Libe and Pilar from Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. Now, I had the pleasure of speaking with you guys just about a year ago when season one was coming out, and I love this show so much. I'm so oh, excited. Um, first of all, I kind of want to start, how was the reaction? Obviously, it's such a huge deal to have a season one of a show. We know this, and it's such a huge deal for it to get picked up again and to be able to continue that story. What was your immediate reaction and whoever would like to start? Um, obviously, we're going to have from a production and from an actress's point of view, but what was your reaction when you found out that you were able to step back into the story to continue to tell it and obviously getting back together and working with this incredible cast and crew? Well, for me, it was pretty incredible because we got our season two uh, greenlit before season one was done. So that showed that the studio really believed in us and what we were doing. And we were able to then keep, you know, all the actors on for season two and, and all of our team and even elevate a lot of our team. And the reception has honestly been just like awe inspiring. Uh, we got nine nominations for the Emmys and won five of those. We've got the Emmys coming up, GLAAD Awards. So just to be acknowledged by so many peers in different parts of the industry has been truly special, especially because this is a story about, you know, a, a little girl, a little 13 year old girl um, that's never been told before in the Marvel history. So it's been amazing. Yeah. And it's so crazy because we started recording this in 2020 in the lockdown, like in our closets and like, like Disney sent us a call and, it, and that's my cat. <laughs> um, he agrees. <laughs> <laughs> so glad you decided to do that right now. Um, <laughs> but we it started out like I it, it was so like it was just this like fun I would I would be in my closet and like record with Diamond from across the country and have these guys on Zoom and it was like just so fun and filled with like love and laughter and light and like then and we, and then yeah we got the season two pickup before we even like before the first show before the show came out and so we just been working on it for so long that when it finally came out like. I, yeah, just how much everyone loved it and how much like all of the love that we felt putting into it was received by the audience and the way that like they gave that back was like so moving and beautiful and like, I don't know, I just want to keep doing it forever, so. <laughs> Definitely. Well, and I love the fact that, like you mentioned, you know, you're recording it in your closet, you know, it's 2020. I love the fact that you guys had that that luxury of actually knowing that you had that security blanket of being able to have several seasons like that. I think that that's such a great, wonderful thing that not a lot of people have the luxury of having, especially in this business. Now, obviously, it's such a unique show in its own right. Like you mentioned, it's it's a Marvel, it's animated, um, it lives in the Marvel universe, which I think is so remarkable. And I think that we're touching on so many different um, elements of like culture and everything like that throughout having this show. And I think that it's so important and it's so entertaining. What is it to you both personally that you think is resonating with the audience, like maybe thematically speaking, or even if there's a particular character or moment or even like tagline, um, what is it that you both think that is really resonating with the audience and getting them to obviously tune in, love the show and and obviously keep them coming back for more? Mm -hmm. Well, for me, it's mainly our theme, which is one girl, one person can truly make a difference, but we show how that can happen. And what I mean is, you know, Lunella wants to step into the role of superhero and she doesn't have superpowers. She just has her amazing brain, but she does it with the help of her best friend, who's a little diverse girl, just like her and her community. And just the message that with, you know, when you reach out to help and when we as women, especially, and this is something we don't see especially in animation and for for young kids we see a lot of like drama and conflict but in this show we have two little girls that support each other love each other elevate one another and because of that they're able to accomplish anything and i think that's such an important message that especially kids need to hear but also grown-ups like me <laughs> it's it's given me personally a lot of confidence in the show you know as we make it to remember who we're telling the story of and that um we deserve those same things for ourselves yeah and I also think that like, there isn't really a cartoon like this. I think that it's like the 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 friendships are very real. The the care the I, I think like it's it's funny. It's very honest. It tackles like so many different things. And also like, I don't know, just like the music is so good. The sequences like there's like the actiony animation. The animation doesn't look like anything on TV. I just think it's like. It's it's unlike anything. It's not just like good for a cartoon. It's like genuinely just like a really good piece of art 
that I think um, sort of transcends the medium and yeah. Very well said. Yeah, I agree. It is so unique in so many different ways. And I mean, growing up myself, I was a huge cartoon lover, especially on, on Disney and everything like that. I mean, I grew mm -hmm. up in that generation with the Proud family, even like Brandy and Mr. Whiskers, you know, like I remember all of those. Like, yes. <laughs> So uh, no, the animation is unlike anything that we've seen. And I think it's so unique. Um, and I think that it speaks obviously huge levels to everybody involved in the project. Obviously, we have season two coming up, and I, I am a big, big stickler. I don't want you guys to spoil anything or say anything that you're not allowed to say, and I don't want to ever put you in that position. But if there's anything that you could each individually tease to our audience, obviously, to get them excited to tune in, thematically speaking, if you want to describe it in a few of like key adjective words, however you'd like mm -hmm. to answer it, but what can you tease about this upcoming season to make sure that everybody's tuning in? Well, I can tell you overall, the difference is that in the first season, Lunella was really trying to kind of step into her power and learn how to be a superhero. And she wasn't so sure about it. And in the second season, she has fully stepped into her power. She is full on superhero. And we kind of leave the Lower East Side. So we get to meet uh, multidimensional uh, Marvel Universe characters and, and different worlds. And we have some incredible voice actors coming up, like even bigger superstars that we had in the first season. And, and I could tease that three of them are Latinos, which is what I'm especially super excited about. We have Edward James Olmos, Andy Garcia, and Sholo Maridueña all stepping into the role of an amazing Marvel uh, character. So yeah, we have a lot of fun things, juicy things coming up for our audience season two. Yeah, I sort of feel like if I say anything more than what Bilad just said, I'll get in trouble. But <laughs> there's, uh, you know, it's a fine line, right? Think, <laughs> but I get there's more. Casey sings more. There's more, uh, more music. More. I'm I'm excited for this one, uh, like musical number that um, she and Lunella sing. And yeah, yeah, Liva's well, a great singer. I mean, come on, she. Spanish, English, she sings in Yiddish. <laughs> multi talented Exclusively oh, yeah. Yiddish. <laughs> Single dropping soon. Lots I love more you. <laughs> have to come. Well, I just want to say thank you so much for speaking with me. Again, love the show so much. I'm so excited for everything that's to come with season two. You guys are remarkable. And it's been such a pleasure speaking with you. And I hope I hope to be able to continue to have conversations with you guys as the show continues to have success and progress, because I don't feel like this is a project that's going anywhere anytime soon, other than carrying on triumphantly in the direction that it's going. So thank you so much again. Uh -huh. for thank time. you so much, Hannah. We really appreciate it. Hope to see you again soon. Bye.